Within Infragistics Windows Forms toolset, WinGrid is one of the largest and most full-featured controls available. In this video, we're going to walk you through a host of features. Let's jump right in. There are many ways to get started with the grid, but for now, let's start by going to the Data Sources window. Now what I'll do is select one of these entities, such as Customers, click on the drop-down, and select UltraGrid. I want the UltraGrid, otherwise known as WinGrid, to represent my customer's entity. If that doesn't exist in yours, you can always go to the Customize option or Menu item. Then make sure you check off UltraGrid, so it just pulls controls that are compatible with collection type data. What we'll do next is drag and drop the customer's entity onto the form. There are many ways to set up WinGrid within your enterprise application that you can do programmatically but this is a great way to build a quick application. So let's click on the dock property and just set it up to fill. The other thing we want to do is view the codes to add a few more components here. I want to fetch the orders and order details because this is a hierarchical grid. As you noticed, it already identifies that customers have other child entities associated with them. So let's go back to the code and fetch the rest of the data. So now we've got the orders and order details, and we can take our time exploring many different ways you can configure the grid. Right now, if we were to just run this, you'll see that we have all of our entities fetched all in one shot. All our customers' orders and order details exist on the form simultaneously. What you'll notice here is that the grid is very, very good at handling lots of data. Here we have all these entities and we can keep drilling down into all of them as quickly as we click on them. Also, you see this toolbar here? That toolbar is added from Visual Studio and is part of the Microsoft control sets, so it just throws that on there. You can also use our Windows Forms Ultra Tools Manager as well as the ribbon to configure with the toolbar manager. So you've got lots of different types of UIs that you can create for the grid. Now let's take a look at setting the property. You can always go through the property window and explore various WinGrid properties. Down here at the base level, you can see some of them here, like basic properties that you might expect. But the majority of your time spent setting properties will be in the display layout. This is where you configure various items, such as the Add New box, if you want to show it or not. Here, you can also work with the various bands. That represents the entities in the grid. You know that there are customer's orders and order details, and here they are because they are bound at design time. We have our customer's orders and order details. Then you could configure band level properties, say, if you want to show the caption on the Add New button, such as, please add new customer. There are other things such as card view. We'll click here and see, do you want to go into card view, which is set to true. Notice how it turns into card view, both set it back to false. The other property that's very important for each band or entity is the columns collection. Here's where we access all the customer columns of customer ID, company name, etc. This is where you set a bunch of properties for each column, such as the header's caption. You note if you want to allow grouping or set a value list for the actual column. These are all the various columns for each one. Then if you skip down past the columns, we'll shrink this back up and we'll see various other fixed rows and empty rows. There are many different properties, like the scroll style, where you can set deferred or immediate. Scroll bounds gives you the option to scroll to fill. Down here you can select multi-band, or if you have a plain old flat grid, you can select single band. 
Now another even larger property in here that you can expand on is the override. This is where we set properties that affect the entire grid. Active cell border appearance, active row appearance, add row appearance. Allow an update on the entire grid. Card spacing, cell padding, etc. If you really want to configure the grid with super granularity, you can go through the grid dot display layout and you'll go to each band to customize them. So for example, if you want customers to do something, but you want orders to do something else, you go down to dot override and work on all these items here. This can seem a tad overwhelming, but don't worry. Once you get the hang of it and scroll through, you'll find that the property names are pretty self-explanatory. Now let's explore another way of configuring the grid. A simpler way if you're new to Infragistics controls. You can click on this big start button on the grid in the designer, which pulls up this ultra wind grid designer. We can go to the feature picker here, where all those items in the grid.display layout and grid.displayout.override can be found all batched up here. Here you can set up the columns to auto fit, or you can resize the last column, or extend the last column too. We can select card view again here to set card views for certain bands, which basically means that instead of showing rows, the grid will convert them into cards of data. This is great if you want to show the data as a grid that doesn't have a hierarchical collection. You can show cards in your lower bands, but keep in mind that whatever band you set as the card, that will be the last and final band. You can see here that when I click on orders, I can't get the order details that will become the final band. Here we can also enable column moving and column sizing. We can enable empty rows, which creates these empty rows that are non-interactive elements that finish off the look and feel of the grid. And there are different variations of this empty row style that you can show too. We can also enable other great value-added features, such as filtering. If we allow filtering, you'll see that we have different types of filter UI. For example, this is a default filter with a simple drop-down with a distinct list of values. I personally like the filter row, where it's one complex dedicated row that you can simply start typing in. We'll explore that more when we run it. We can also turn on fixed headers, which gives you these little pin icons and pins down your columns or your rows. Here we have buttons on our row selectors so we can pin them down. Then we also have different types of sorting, like multi-column sorting. In addition, iData error info is cool. If you have data objects that implement the iData error info interface with validation and business logic, you can set this up and specify rows or cells that go in error. It will basically pop up and show an icon when there's an error state, as well as tooltips that represent your business object's error message. You can also enable merged cells here. Whenever columns are sorted and the same value is on top of each other, all those identical values get merged into one cell. Outlook Group By is another feature that all grids should have, especially when you have a lot of columns with variations and want to create groupings from those columns. Row Selector is another feature you can turn on or off. Default behavior, essentially, is whatever the control developer here at Infragistics decided to set as the default. But you can also explicitly set properties by showing or not showing them. As an aside, when you don't show them and if you want to allow selection of rows, you're just going to have to work with some of the codes to activate or select rows based on when the end user clicks on something. But when you select show those row selectors, Clicking on a row selector definitely and explicitly selects a row. Then we have other things, such as row sizing. If you select free sizing, sizing one row doesn't affect the others.
but if you select synchronize, when you size one row, they all become that size. There are different types of scrolling with scroll bounds and scroll to fill. And there are different scroll style types like deferred or immediate. Immediate consumes a tad bit more resources, but it's not really noticeable on this machine. Immediate means that as soon as you start scrolling, it's right in front of your face. Whereas with deferred as your scroll style, as you scroll, you don't see any movements. The grid just jumps to the location when you let go of the mouse. We have scroll tooltips, and we also have selection. Here, if you choose single select, for example, you'll only select one row at a time, or you can choose extended select, which means that you can select many rows using control click or shift click. We can also turn on summaries here, which gives us a little icon in the header. Or we can turn on updating, which can be set up with the add new box, where you can click on a button on the toolbar to add a new business object to your entities. Or you can do it an easier way by selecting show slash add new box. And Infragistics gives you a button for each entity that you'd like to add a new entity to, which is very convenient. In addition to the Add New button, you can also allow row adding, for example, at the bottom of the grid, which you'll see is pretty cool. You can show one or the other or both. Let's just turn them all on to see what it looks like. Then you can select if you want to allow row deleting as well as updating too. So as you can see, the updating node handles adding, deleting, and updating all in one shot. Let's also go to the band and column settings and check out some things that we can do with the bands. For example, we can go to customers and check out the various things I can do with these columns. More of the work will be done in customer orders. So let's go to orders. If you wanted to set the format of this column, you go to the column.format and enter mm slash dd slash yyyy. If we go to freight, we can set the letter C for currency. We can set the column dot style to one of these controls here. We could just choose one of these guys and add an edit button, drop down, validate, there's many different things. This is a currency list that's just up as a currency editor. But this list gives us many different choices. You can also take any one of our Infragistics editor controls, throw it on the form, and then go up here to the editor components and locate it there. But since we don't have any Infragistics editor controls to implement, it provides an embedded editor. We can't really hook that up right now. Another thing you can do is get the Ultra drop-down control and then go to the value list property. You can get the Ultra drop-down, hook it up to some data and throw it on the form. Then when you click down to the column value list that's most appropriate, you select that drop-down from here. You'd want to do that with the foreign key ones, such as if I go down to orders, columns, and I want to go to, let's say, product idea. We could basically create a list of all products from the products table and throw it on the Ultra drop-down. Hook it up and then go here and select it from there and have a drop-down instead of the product ID. We just set the format to the currency on this guy here as well. For quantity, I could go here and set this up as different types of numeric editors. integer positive with spin buttons. Just take a look at what this did for us here. As you see, everything looks a little bit brighter here, and we've got more stuff going on. Now we have this big grid with all these cool functionalities going on. We have columns that have been resized because we set some properties before, such as auto size, and then sized them back. We can pin down some columns. If we want to pin this, it's done and when we scroll left and right, it will always be in view. We can keep our eye on, let's say, this guy here and that guy there. When we scroll, notice that they're pinned against the top. 
Imagine the stock market apps or inventory management or customer management apps out there that you can do this with. Anytime you wanna keep your eye on some things, just pin them down with this little tool. Here we can also clear the filter or set a filter. We can say, show me everything that equals this guy right here, and it's cleared again. Then I could select the logical operator to give me everything that contains FK or AB or SS. There are lots of different types of filters we can use here. We can even match regular expressions. This is pretty complex stuff, but it's got a really rich functionality. As we expand these guys, notice the formatting there, like our currency editor. When we click on it, notice it's a currency editor that won't let you type in whatever you want. If we expand it even further, notice when we go to quantity, we get spin buttons in the numeric integer here. Because of the numeric integer editor that does summaries, we could select minimum, maximum, count, sum, and it all gets shown here underneath that band. We can outlook group by, let's say, the country column. We'll drop it up here. And now we're grouped by countries, meaning a distinct list of values is made from that column, and each distinct value becomes a row. All of our Brazil records are here, and we could do grouping, because now I want to take a look at contact types. So now if I go back to Brazil, I see that we have two accounting managers, one assistant sales agent, two marketing assistants, and so forth. Now we can focus on these records. Here you'll notice the cell merging because we have one cell and another cell with the same value. When you click off, it becomes merged. It's a visual thing. Something else we can do is multi-column sorting. Let's say if we sort first on country, and let's just bring city next to it. We can then hold shift first, country, and then we have a sort within a sort. If we scroll up, we have Argentina, and then we have these three records here, and then Brazil, and we have these three records there. All these valuable things around your data happened just by setting properties that can create a very rich grid with all of this functionality. If we want to add a new customer, we click on New Customer and jump right into adding values. If we escape out of that, notice that we still have a default Add New Row. Remember the Add New Row that we also chose to show earlier? This is always there. If we wanted to add a new order, we could just jump down there and add a new order. You can set up your business object so that when a new object is created, it'll give you what you see here, a data set that's automatically generated. Here it gives us a negative one. But then after the data set is populated and resolved back to the back end, the real order ID is fetched depending on how your back end is set up. And we can add new order details to each one of these. Ultimately, there are so many other things we could do with WinGrid, but we would be here forever exploring all of our options. But hopefully you found some useful information in this video. Thanks for joining us.